Morning Metaverse. I'm Thor with the Red Hand, and this video is going to be about breakpoint presentations around the economy, what they talked about there, and then right into the roadmap and go through the different seasons uh, that they've laid out already, uh, my take on it, and uh, give people something that they can watch through and have a good idea of what, what the vision is for the, the next several years. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing about how Star Atlas presented the economy at the Breakpoint event, they did not focus on the economy very much, and I think that was a good decision. Now, previously, economy had been the majority of, or I should say, a very large portion of the previous events, COPA, 4 to 6, and most interviews that, that I'd watched uh, in the, the previous year. And there's good reason for that, because the economy was the most uh, thought through and developed part of it. And it's very difficult to talk about gameplay and the game mechanics when you don't have demos ready to go. And now after this event, that they have some really good game footage and some real content to talk about, I really would like to see um, the conversation around Star Atlas turned very heavily on the game side of things, the game play, the game development, content on that uh, standpoint. Because up to this point, I think they've done a great job of showing how focused they were on the economy, which is extremely important. If you're a gamer and you don't care about that stuff, that doesn't mean it's not going to affect you. Um, as someone looking at a project, the fact that they spent so much time building out this economy and they have a su substantial amount of their uh, personnel focused on economy is a great thing, but we've talked about it enough. Uh, let's move on to the game. But they've broken their econ team into uh, the game uh, into three sections: game economy, which is balancing of the game. Uh, that's what gamers are very familiar with: uh, updates and rebalancing the games. Um, and it's very important that that team is engaged with uh, what the community is saying in regards to how fun that game is. Um, when a development team uh, strays away or, or stops listening to the community, uh, then that game balance really gets out of whack. But if you can hit that game balance, um, you'll develop a, a really strong following uh, because that's what people want to have, a, a well-balanced game that is fun. The next part of the econ team is the token economy. And so the tokenomics is basically anything that has cryptocurrency engaging with the game. Uh, this is where it starts being different from a traditional game and having a, crew, or a, a group that's focused on how those interactions are, uh, are uh, acting and reacting, uh, especially when you're going for a full player-driven economy. Uh, to ease into that or to, to start that process, um, it could become a little chaotic from time to time because uh, this is a very new part of, of the whole gaming realm and, and quite frankly, uh, a new part of, of cryptocurrency. Uh, and so a player-run economy, a true player-run economy is really exciting to me. Um, and so there's a whole uh, section of their econ team for that. And then Metaverse Econ, um, and that is anything that is connecting Star Atlas with the broader uh, Metaverse ecosystem. And I want to see a lot of progress in there um, I, I don't expect to see or hear a whole lot of detail about it, but I would like to see bringing in other metaverses and engaging them and, and integrating them into the Star Atlas experience. Uh, that is going to just make the Atlas or Star Atlas uh, ecosystem more and more robust. Uh, and uh, so definitely looking forward to that. I actually just talked about the econ portion a whole lot more than uh, Michael Wagner did, which again, I think was a good thing for that presentation. Um, so let's go right into the seasons and pre-seasons of Star Atlas, the roadmap going forward. And so the pre-season is the showroom R1 through R4. Uh, so we've launched R1, and that is the showroom that we're able to engage with right now uh, through Epic Games uh, Game Store. and we will be looking for the release of R2, and it sounds like it's going to be the beginning of uh, 2023, um, quarter one, 2023. And I really hope they get that out uh, in the front uh, part of that quarter and, and get that out there 
um, now that the the funding is much more restricted, uh, getting more gameplay uh, is extremely important right now. And so in the release two, R2 is going to be flight and racing, and then multiplayer instances. So you'll be able to interact with multiple people within the showroom area, uh, and uh, that can be places for guilds to meet up, for um, whole community events to be hosted uh, in the showroom and, and in the a uh, atmosphere of Star Atlas. Um, and then within that showroom, it sounds like the showroom uh, grounds will be expanded to um, a racing track where you can race against the clock and have a leaderboards on your R or your X4s and uh, potentially the Floyd liners, uh, the free ship for everybody to fly around with and in interact with. The X4s are going to have a little bit more utility in the near run, so uh, that'll be interesting uh, how that affects the the marketplace. But uh, uh, really getting that experience is huge. Now, what Michael Wagner was saying about R3 is that everybody is going to be going out and going to mining facilities to to build and craft materials. Uh, and so those mining facilities, I, I know I have some in my wallet from the uh, Rebirth event where we purchased some posters and as a result uh, received some mining facility assets. Um, if that is players' assets, mining facilities, that are going to be used. I'm curious about that. I would love to get some more utility from the assets that I currently have uh, and for the other people that, that have those. But we will all be crafting and, and uh, mining resources to build a warp gate uh, to exit the showroom and go into season one. And so that is really cool. Um, and, and I hope that that leading into R4 which it says Ecos attack and looting and skins. The Ecos are a uh, rogue faction uh, within the storyline of Star Atlas. So if we've created this warp gate and then uh, the first action leaving the showroom is a, a community effort to accomplish achievements fighting against a rogue faction, I think that would be a really good um, galvanizing experience for the community uh, as we're getting out there. And so looting and skins, that's exciting. We'll be able to to gain resources from uh, you know destroying eco ships and then building our 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 personal wells and and our factions wells and and uh, start really making a name for ourselves at that point. And then the skins will be customizing and and bringing the creativity, individual uh, aspects to, our ships and and that is really cool to to be able to start building a brand for yourself what what would that look like on my ships um what's that going to look like for the uh the red hand for example i've already thought about some design ideas that would look really cool you can also check out some of coexist projects that they actually did uh, and created different skins on uh, their versions of the x5 ships uh, that i thought were really cool um, and so that creativity is, is already there in the community and some really good ideas. So I'm excited to see uh, how that starts to change and shape the way that, that we experience Star Atlas. And this is the warp gate that we will be building. Uh, the showroom is down in the bottom left corner of that picture, uh, but the warp gate is massive and it is going to be a, a whole community undertaking. Um, I, I think that is a colossal task to take on, and those are the kind of tasks that I enjoy really pouring into. Uh, so I, you know, that idea is is really fleshed out there in in that artwork, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they they make that uh, come alive with Unreal Engine Five. So that was preseason. Uh, and then we go into Season Zero, which is combat and racing. You'll be able to have a racing career, fighting, a fighter career, and then Sage will be released, the browser minigame. Uh, that is supposed to be ready at Season Zero. Um, and in regards to timeline and, and the, the um, importance of getting these things released, I, I really hope that Sage is moved up uh, as much as possible 
in our game in our ability to uh, start the gameplay. I know the DevNet, um, the TestNet is the first iteration of Sage, and uh, but you know Sage, uh, the Star Atlas Gold era, uh, that is supposed to be launching the in-game economies and in the player-run economies. Uh, the sooner we can have that happen, the better, in my opinion, because specifically for Automata's ability to uh, make profits from the fees that's going to go on with the market transactions. Um, having to find uh, ways for them to recoup the funds that were lost um, is is important for the development of this game. So I would really like to see Sage moved up in the timeline. But if we get to the season zero, the racing and the fighting is in itself going to be a phenomenal game loop to to engage with. Now, before I get into the rest of the seasons, I want to mention Lloyd from the club actually did a really good video, a little bit different style than what I'm doing right now. Uh, but I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Check that out. He has some really good details uh, and uh, looking into to some of the pictures that they used, uh, maybe some insight on, on alpha uh, of the upcoming seasons uh, that would be really good to look at. But in season one is the ship mining. And so that's uh, Space Mining Careers Crew. Oni Central Space Station is going to be available at that point. And then Space Habs. And Space Habs um, from the core graphic novel was, was mentioned. Habs or habitation units, uh, you know, houses. I, I think that is going to be an interesting um, avenue. And I know in regards to uh, raising funds and that type of thing, uh, some of the community had come up with some, some really good ideas. Also check out the link below for the discords regarding that. Um, in, in terms of selling land or maybe this is uh, selling space in these uh, central space stations, uh, some and and those spots should be fairly uh, valuable because that's going to be the the center of a lot of commerce as the metaverse econ really starts uh, pulling in uh, connections to the other metaverses in in the crypto space. So um, that's something to keep your your eye on and and to think about. Then season two, and this is the only thing that I have a, a question about, is the game hunting. Um, uh, first person shooter combat, uh, game hunter career, and then mounting. And mounting, I've I've actually had a few conversations with people in the community, um, uh, on the in the foundation room, uh, mostly just uh, uh, messing around. But the thought of being able to mount animals um, and ride them through uh, the the environments, but specifically if a punab would be able to mount a tigu and then ride it through the spaceship to get around faster. I think that's a uh, an idea that has legs. Um, and so the this part, this season two, I don't know why that is really pulled up to one of the first seasons, unless it's one of the the uh, more infrastructure parts of building the game out because of that first person combat. Um, and, and if this is the easiest way to to have first person con uh, combat integrated, then fine, but you know there are other things like in season three, bounty hunting, bounty hunting, and then Ooster Central Station in season three. I think bounty hunting is going to be a, a, a one of the more popular game loops for people and to attract new people into Star Atlas. Um, and so the priority there, um, I don't know if if that's laid out ideally, but I will trust the the uh, development team with with the series of events. Uh, it's just that's the only, only uh, red flag that I've seen in, in the way they lay this out. So then season four is the smuggling and freight. So freight, um, those careers, another big group of guilds and players that are going to want to focus on freight, uh, shipping to and from different space stations. And that's going to be big for growing the economy and, and creating motion in that economy, which is extremely important. Um, player space station creations. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly, I, I, I guess maybe that is um, not central space stations, but the, the space stations out in different uh, solar systems uh, as you, we expand out into the, the Star Atlas uh, universe. 
then maybe we're now able to start building those space stations. That would be a really uh, a, a, a fascinating to me, a fascinating way to engage a large group of people in, in specific tasks and, and galvanize the community uh, even more. Uh, so I think as that's spread apart, um, I think that's a, a good way to do it. On the last leg here is season five, uh, land mining and crafting. So mining outposts, manufacturing careers, and then the MUD Central Space Station. Um, everybody was building uh, the, the uh, warp gate in the MUD Central Station, but I, I guess MUD has a bunch of union labor and its uh, pro progression has been really slow. And so they're actually the last central space station to finish, even though they had everybody's help to start. Um, no shade there, just observation. And then, so having those mining outposts, you know, I'm not sure how that really plays with the previous mining ships and and then um, the even the preseason being able to go out to mining facilities. Maybe this is the, the mining posts outside of the central station area that we started at and actually set up those posts on new planets that we've discovered. Um, that might make more sense. Uh, but the manufacturing career is a huge uh, group of, of people that uh, just want to be manufacturing. I know Heimdall is really uh, geared on, on building ships and, and being the, the big manufacturer, at least in the Ooster sector. Uh, and so I'm really excited to see that season five. If we think about this as a five to seven year uh, scale, you know, that's around year three, uh, three or four, depending on how progression goes. Uh, so just keeping that in mind as we're talking about seasons. Season six is exploration and transport. Um, I, I, you know, the exploration is going to be something that, uh, as you've noticed, I'm sure, uh, uh, repair and rescue has not happened yet. So the exploration is a gameplay that I might be taking on while I'm waiting for the the repair and, and rescue to really come into full uh, with UE5. And and that is something that I'm personally looking forward to, uh, the exploration of, of expanding the universe and finding new planets to then bring these mining outposts and the star, uh, star bases out to. Uh, so that could be really cool. Um, home world planets, so really establishing ourselves uh, in these new areas. Um, and and I'm, I'm very interested with that. Then season seven is repair and salvage. Okay, great. Uh, repair and salvage careers, all ships flight ready. Uh, so this is cool. We'll have every ship uh, available to us. Um, and, you know, I'm imagining... Uh, throughout these different seasons, more and more ships are going to be coming available. I'm really curious on what the order is for ships. Um, I know if you have a ship that, that isn't available for a long period of time, um, that that's going to uh, probably weigh down on the market price of those ships, as well as your ability to engage in the game. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious how uh, they're going to be able to solve that problem. Uh, whether the Floyd liner is going to be available for a longer period of time for those people that are sort of out of luck with ships that haven't been fully released uh, in Unreal Engine 5, I don't know. Uh, that's something that we should definitely keep in mind and might end up being uh, a, an issue of DAO proposal. Uh, and and DAO proposals throughout this series of, of events is... Um, uh, uh, hopefully going to be uh, become a lot larger part of these decision making uh, aspects. And then in season eight, that is where rescue and refuel and politics are going to take their center stage and, and really launch. And, and so as the red hand, uh, this will be the culmination of uh, our efforts, uh, our, our working with other guilds and other players uh, leading up to this point. Uh, I, I really expect that we'll have uh, a, a very well organized and streamlined system at that point uh, to, to be able to really launch this off and be a, a major player from um, the release of, of Rescue Refuel. And then uh, the full decentralization upon Season 8, which uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm very 
um, I hold that uh, near and dear to my heart as far as where I want this to end up. That full decentralization uh, with current events is all the more important. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really excited for that, for Atlas uh, version one to be uh, finished and, and for us to grow the metaverse from there to our vision. And for my final thoughts, I'm gonna let the MedTech video play because this is the kind of content that I really wanna see released on a much more regular basis. Uh, I would love to do ship reviews with this quality uh, of presentation to talk about and to really bring people's interest to Star Atlas. I've seen several videos, uh, some you know, saying Star Atlas is dead, blah, blah, blah. Um, I disagree with that. I don't think uh, that it's really being honest with all the details. I think things are going to get uh, more difficult and we're gonna have to do uh, smart moves in order to uh, move forward. Uh, but Star Atlas and its community and its development team and be very dedicated to continue producing this level of product, this uh, video game uh, and experience for the community and to engage with a larger community. Uh, for people that are just thinking about getting into Star Atlas, this isn't financial advice, but I will tell you what I would be doing. And that is at, when the market is at the bottom, that is when you buy and if you think that Star Atlas will continue and uh, has a future, then this would be a great point for me to get in had I not got in at the very beginning. Um, so you don't have to do that. Uh, you can just sit on the sidelines and watch it happen. Uh, but I have seen a lot of evidence that Star Atlas is going to be able to weather this storm and become stronger for it. Hopefully that video was helpful. Uh, don't worry about liking or subscribing, but if you know someone that would find it useful, then please share it with them. And if you can do that, then today was a good day. Good morning, Metaverse.